What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and in this video, we're going to be setting up our animation system for our crouch and crouch walking animation states. Uh, so before we get started, if you're watching this video, chances are you're not subscribed because 99% of you are not subscribed. And that's a pretty bad number, so if you like this one, be sure to click on that sub or thanks button below. Speaking of thanks, huge shout out to Miss Mo Davis and Tammy the Psychic. Thank you so much for being channel members. If you want to support the channel and get shout outs in videos like this, click on that join button below. Alright, so on to the video itself. We're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, the characters folder because there's something else in there that we haven't used yet. Uh, the animation blueprint. So if we hit play, you'll see that we're currently using the Quinn character. There's a Manny character and a Quinn character. This is basically the, the male and female body types um, that are in the game. And right now we're using the Quinn character. So how can we adjust that if we wanted to use Manny, for example? Uh, let's go to the third person, go to blueprints, and open up our BP third person character. Inside of this character, we can see that we have two locations that reference the Quinn actor. The skeletal mesh, which is uh, basically just the skeleton of the uh, animation system. So we'll switch that to Manny Simple from Quinn Simple and you'll see it changes, but the animations are still of Quinn. So if we hit compile and run, then we have the masculine figure with the feminine walks and things like that. Uh, if we want the masculine or Manny walks with that one, all we have to do is switch between the animation blueprint for Quinn to the animation blueprint for Manny. And you'll see he kind of has a more hunked over or hunched over like walk or gait. Uh, so let's save this and see what that looks like. So now we have the Manny figure with the Manny blueprint. Uh, so great, that's how we can adjust those. Uh, let's say we want to use the Manny animation blueprint and add the new crouch uh, animation states. Let's head back to the content folder, go into characters, and go into mannequins. Inside mannequins, we can see that we have animations and we'll see our animation blueprint for both Manny and Quinn. So let's go ahead and open up the Manny animation blueprint and see what's in here. We're shown the event graph and this is essentially uh, where the variables and changes to the animation system, things like whether the character is falling and uh, things like that. This is where all of that is set. And then the actual animation uh, graph is in the locomotion section. So if we open up Adam graph and open locomotion, you'll see that we have our two animation states. We have idle when we're not moving and we have walk run when we are moving. So if we take a look at how this works, uh, there's a transition to walk run and we can double click on that. And that just says if our character should move, then we can enter the transition, which is walk run. And this walk run is simply the animation for running. And um, we change the speed of that animation based on the actual ground speed of the character. And then to go back, we go to the not rule here. And it will say if you should not move, so if the character is not moving, then we move back to the idle state. So that's basically it. If we're not moving, we're in idle. If we are moving, we're in walking and running. So. Now we just need to create an animation state for our crouching. Let's go ahead and right click and add a state. Let's call this crouch. And now we have an animation state, but no animation. So let's go ahead and open up this animation. And generally you would want to drag one of these animations from the right hand side. Let me move it out a little bit since I know my camera's in the way. So you would want to grab one of these animations, uh, for example, this walking one and connect it to the result. And then whenever you're in this crouching state, this is the animation that will play. But you'll notice we don't have any crouching animations in this list. That's because we haven't converted our animations uh, to our current mannequin. All of our animations that we downloaded in the Anim Starter Pack are made for the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin, not the Unreal Engine 5 mannequin. But that's a really easy thing to fix. Let's go and open up the Anim Starter Pack. And you'll see that we have a few animations here that we can use. For example, if we type crouch, we'll see that we have crouch idle rifle hip. This is a great one for crouching. 
And of course we also have a blend space for crouch walking. So let's go ahead and convert both of these. So we're going to click on the crouch idle rifle hip, right click on it, and go to retarget animation assets. Here we can choose duplicate and retarget the animation asset. And we already have an IK retargeter, uh, which came with this pack, or which came with the uh, third person packs. Uh, so we can actually switch to retarget UE4 Manny to UE5 Manny. So that brings in all the settings we need to properly retarget those. And then you can choose where that animation is going to be stored. So if I change this, I can say I want it in the animation starter pack and just in the base folder there. So we'll press OK and retarget. Now we have a new one here, Crouch Rifle Hip 1. Let's do the same thing for uh, this blend space, Crouch Walk, because we're going to need that later. Let's right click, retarget animation, duplicate. We're going to choose UE4 to UE5, change the location to the NM Starter Pack folder, and press OK and retarget. Great. Now we have animations for crouching and crouch walking. Let's head back to our content folder, open up the characters folder, open up the mannequins folder, open up the animations folder, and then we'll open up our ABP Manny blueprint once again. So now for this uh, locomotion crouch state, we're gonna go ahead and drag the crouch idle rifle hip animation and connect it here. And we'll go ahead and compile. So we can see that this is what the animation looks like if we double click on it. But nothing is actually going to happen yet because there's no way that we can actually transition from either of these states into the crouch state. So to fix that, we need to create these transitions based on a variable. And we don't have that variable yet. So we're going to create it. In the variables box right here, we're going to add a new variable. And we already have a variable for is falling, and that's built in. So I'm going to type is crouching. And I'm going <laughs> to retype that because I spelled it wrong. So is crouching. There we go. And hit compile. And now we have a variable for if the character is crouching. We aren't changing it yet because we actually need to check the movement controller and see if the character actually is crouching or not. But we have the variable to use while we code this together. So let's go ahead and create a transition from idle to crouch and from crouch to idle. So if we're not moving and we press the crouch button, then we can transition to crouch. Let's go ahead and open that up and make that logic. So we'll say is crouching get and if that's true, then we can enter the transition. That's super easy. But what if we want to transition back when it's not true? Let's go ahead and double click on that. We'll drag this in once again and type get is crouching. And this time we're just going to type in not and choose the not boolean. And we can connect that here. Now let's hit compile. And now we have a way to transition into and out of that animation. Because crouching isn't actually connected to anything, it won't actually work, but we can test this. So if I hit play, we're not crouching. And then if I manually turn is crouching on, you'll see that we're crouching in the game. It does look a little funny, um, but that's something we can fix very easily. Let's uncheck the is crouching variable and hit compile. And let's head back to our anim graph. Inside of this anim graph, you'll see that we have an IK trace. This IK trace is exactly what's causing the legs to either try to connect with the floor or not try to connect with the floor. And um, this is essentially when it should do an IK trace. If the character is falling, then they shouldn't do an IK trace because they're in the air and their feet don't need to touch the ground. But if they're not falling, then we should do the IK trace. Uh, similarly, we need to drag crouching in here. And we could, of course, do a uh, multi-branched uh, statement and say if, if it's not falling and is not crouching, and then do an and boolean and do a couple things to check. Um, but one funny or interesting way to do this is to say not boolean and connect that right over to our alpha because this alpha is either going to be a 0 or a 1. And if it's a one, then that means that um, you are gonna be using the IK trace. And if it's a zero, you're not. So let's see how that works. 
if I go ahead and go to locomotion and check the is crouching variable, you'll see that we are no longer in the funny pose. Our character is actually posing properly um, and the IK trace isn't messing up the legs. Perfect. But now we need to actually uh, check whether the character is crouching or not because we don't want to have to manually press this button every time. So let's go back to our event graph. You'll see that the way that this works is there's an update or tick function that checks all of these different things. So if the movement component, if uh, the character is moving, then that sets the ground speed. If the character is falling, for example, then that sets the is falling variable and uh, things like that. So we want to add another pin here to check if the character is crouching. So we're going to drag the movement component. We already have a movement component here, but we can right click and type in movement component and choose get movement component. Now we can drag off of this and type crouching and choose is crouching from the nav movement component. Now we can drag is crouching into our event graph and type set so that we can set is crouching based on our movement component, whether we're crouching or not. And then we can connect this to a new pin. You'll see that there isn't a pin here, so we have to actually add one. Let's click on the little plus sign. And now there's a third pin. This will all happen in sequence. So it checks this, then it checks this, then it checks this, and it just continues through. So let's connect this down here. And you'll notice that the uh, pin is a little unorganized. We can create an execute node here and just drag it over. And that'll make it a little bit nicer and easier to visualize, I guess you'd say. That way they're not all just colliding with each other. So that looks pretty good. And now let's hit compile and save. If I hit play and then I hit control, we're crouching. And if I let go, we're no longer crouching. And we're using IK here because the feet are still colliding. But if I press this, we're not using IK anymore. Uh, there is one final issue. And that is when we crouch and we try and move, we're not animating, we're not actually walking because we're just kind of in the crouch animation. So just like we have two animation states in our anim graph, and if we go to locomotion, we have uh, the idle animation and the walking animation. We're gonna do the same thing for the crouching and crouch walking animation. So let's create a new state by right clicking and choosing add state. And we'll name this Crouch move or crouch slash walk. How about that? Because that's walk slash run, crouch slash walk. That kind of goes together. Now we want to create a transition to crouch walk and from crouch walk. And we want to assign an animation to this. So let's go ahead and open up the crouch walk uh, state. And you'll see that we have this blend space for crouch walk. We also have different types of crouch walks based on directions. So we're just gonna drag the crouch walk forward because that's what we're gonna be using in this and connect that here. Let's hit compile and go back to locomotion. Now we need to set the transitions to and from crouching and crouch walking. So let's do the one two first. We'll double click on crouch to crouch walk. And we're gonna say if we are crouching, so is crouching, get and if we're moving so should move we'll choose get should move so if we are crouching and we should move then we can enter this transition so let's drag off of one of these and type and and choose the and boolean and connect both of them here and then connect to this uh, result node let's say compile and now let's go to locomotion and do the same but backwards We'll say if we are crouching, but should move is not true. So we'll choose not Boolean and then we'll type and. So if we are crouching and we should not move, then we can enter the idle crouch state. Let's hit compile and let's test this out. We still have one more step to go, but we're almost done. So if I hit crouch, we are crouching. If I start moving, we are crouch walking. And you'll see that the animation kind of stops. That's an easy fix. But uh, if we let go, we also get stuck in this very odd space. So let's uh, dissect that and see what's going on. 
essentially, once we're crouch walking and we let go, uh, we have nowhere else to go. It can only transition back to the crouch state. So even though we're still walking, it transitions to the crouch animation. We need to create a transition to walk run when we're no longer crouching, but we are still moving. Uh, so let's do that first. Let's drag a transition in and say if we should move, but is crouching is not true and we want to check both of these so we use an and boolean then we can enter the uh, walk run transition then if we're already walk running and we want to transition to crouch walking then we can say if should move get should move and is crouching are both true so we say and then we can transition back Let's hit compile and save. Now, you may have noticed, why did the animation stop? Uh, that's because it's a simple uh, loop or not loop boolean. So we can go into the crouch idle rifle hip and go into the right hand attributes menu and choose loop animation. We can do the same thing for the locomotion crouch walk animation and choose loop animation and hit compile. So let's save and test all this out. So now we can walk, we can crouch, we can let go and we start walking again. We can sprint, we can crouch to idle, crouch to walk, crouch to idle again, crouch to walk, and then start walking. All the different animations will work as expected because they have proper transition nodes to and from the various states. Uh, so that's it for this one. Now we have a nice little movement system to get started with. Uh, we'll see where we go from here. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to add in the next one. Potentially a pickup or item or maybe a switch and door. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace. Conversations to games to end up used with a broader view. He keeps it fresh, always bring something new. It's Mike the Tech, Mike the Tech, huh? Mike the Tech, the architect, huh? Mike the Tech, Mike the Tech, yeah. Mike the Tech, the architect, huh?